Greetings family, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, I am Advocate Pulen. Please, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, do subscribe and also share, comment and uh, like the video. In this channel, I share pearls of wisdom. I share the word of God. And sometimes I also teach South African law. So basically you can say it's a sharing channel. It's a teaching channel. Now today I want to talk about the goodness of God and the fact that we have to continue to do what is good. You know, we always say God is good all the time and all the time God is good because indeed God is good and we have to imitate God. So if God is good, we also have to be good. We have to be good to ourselves. We have to be good to others. We have to be good to our family members, to our children, to our spouses. We have to be good to our colleagues, um, people that we fellowship with, people that we, we work with. You know, we always have to do good, always. This is what the Bible says. And when you read the book, Matthew, chapter 7, verse 12, it says, do for others what you want them to do for you. It's just the, fit, the, the, the first part of that verse 12. So we can basically say uh, Matthew chapter 7, 12a. Do for others what you want them to do for you. We all want people to do good to us. You know, they, they, they usually say, be the friend that you want. Be the change that you want. If you want people to be good to you, be good to them as well. And when people are good to you, reciprocate also. Be good to them. Don't stop to be good because of people are not good to you. You must continue. The Bible encourages us that we continue to do what is good. We do good even to our enemies. When you read Romans chapter 12, verse 20, it says, therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap holes of fire on his head and the Lord will reward you. If your enemy is hungry, feed them. If your enemy is thirsty, give them a drink. Because if you do that, the Bible says you are heaping coals of fire on their head and the Lord will reward you. Let me tell you something. You know, I've always known about this scripture, but it's only when I was reading this verse recently where I became cautious or aware of the very latter part of this verse that says God will reward you. God will, will reward you when you are good to your enemies. You know, the Bible also says that if you greet only those who greet you, what is the difference between you and non-believers? If you are kind to only those who are kind to you, what will be the difference between you and non-believers? So if the word says, feed your, your enemies when they are hungry, give a drink to your enemies when they are thirsty. The Bible says, by that way you are heaping coals of fire on their head and the Lord will reward you, not them. So that is why, you know, sometimes as human beings, we think that if you do something good to someone, they will also do it. In some instances, it will not happen like that. So you must do it for the sake of God, for the sake of the word of God, because the Bible says it is God who will reward you. And what you, do we mean by you are heaping them with coals of fire? It's because when you heap them 
with coals of fire. You are causing them to be remorseful. You are causing them to regret their actions by returning good for evil. You know, I was once in a situation where I worked in a place when somebody close to me passed on, nobody contributed for me. But prior to that, somebody had lost a family member and that whole team contributed. But when it was my turn, nobody contributed. And I want to be honest, I was hurt. Now there came the third term, the third turn when somebody again in, the, in that group lost a family member. You know, from a human perspective, I was like, but when I lost a family member, nobody contributed. And you know what the Holy Spirit said to me? Continue to do what is good. Contribute. Give them a something for condolences. And I did exactly that. You know, for me, when the Holy Spirit speaks to me, when God speaks to me through his spirit, or when I become aware, you know, when I'm thinking about something and a scripture comes into my remembrance, I know that this is God speaking to me. And it is because God wants me to do this. God wants me to do the right thing. So as believers, we must always do what is good. And the Bible also says, continue to do what is good. Continue means what? It means that don't stop. Just because somebody treated you bad, just because somebody was untrustworthy, just because somebody did something that you, don't stop. Continue to do what is good and your reward will come from the Lord. Because when you are good to your enemies, when you feed your enemies, when you give your enemies something to drink, the Bible here means that you are destroying enmity into friendship. Maybe that act will make them to turn their hearts towards you. Maybe they will repent. Maybe they will be remorseful. So that is why even when they are evil towards you, the Bible says, do not repay evil with evil. So in other words, do not be controlled by their actions. Just because they are evil, just because they have betrayed you, does it mean that you're going to betray them? No, continue to do what is good. Do not repay evil with evil. Always do good, continue, don't stop. Do not be weary in doing good. Do not lose heart. Therefore, do good to all people, to everybody. You know, sometimes when you do this, sometimes you, you can be thinking like, it's like I'm a fool or it's like they're manipulating me. No, just bury your hand on the sand. If it's stupidity, let it be. If they think that they are manipulating you and they are clever than you, let it be. The Bible says your reward will come from the, from the Lord. So do not be weary. Do not lose heart. Do not allow anybody to change you. Do not allow them to make you to behave like them. No, continue to, your standard is the word of God. They are not your standard. You are imitating Christ. You are not imitating them. If they treat you bad, don't treat them bad. Just do what you know God expects you to do. You know, when you read the book of Galatians, I'll read from, uh, I'll read chapter six, verse nine to 10. It says, so let us not become tired of doing good. Don't be tired. For if we do not give up, the time will come 
when we will reap the harvest. There's going to come a time. Don't be tired. Don't say, ah, this one, I've been helping her for so long. I've been doing this for so long, but this is all. No, continue. The Bible says, do not be tired. Do not give up. The time will come when you will reap the harvest of the good that you have done. Not necessarily from them. You remember earlier on we said it is the Lord who will reward you. So now verse 10 says, so then as often as we have the chance, we should do good to everyone. Not only to your friends, not only to your family, not only to people who will give it back to you or who would reward you later. No, the Bible says for as often as we have chance, we should have good to, we should do good to everyone. And especially to those who belong to our family in the faith, especially to those of the household of faith. You remember the word says charity begins at home. It's to those of the household of faith, but it's also even to your blood. Because the Bible says you are worse than a non-believer if you put a blind eye on your needy relative. When you don't help them, when they need your help, you ignore them. The Bible says you are you are worse than an, a non-believer. So this is what the word of God says. I know that sometimes you may feel like, ah, here, yeah, it's like they are manipulating me. Of course, there are people who are manipulative, who try to manipulate you, but do not despair. Do not grow weary in doing good. I want us to read our last scripture here is First Peter 4, verse 19. It says, so then those who suffer because it is God's will for them, should, by their good actions, trust completely to their creator who always keeps his promise. So if the Bible says there will be a, a reward for you doing good to everyone, especially to those of the household of faith, that's where you should start. You know, sometimes we can go around giving to charities and what if you, there's nothing wrong with giving to charities, to NGOs, there's nothing wrong. But in all honesty, sometimes somebody just next to you need that help and you are not moved by their situation. Instead, you go to charity. And again, I want to repeat, there's nothing wrong. But for me, I always say, let's start next door. Let's start in our families. Let's start in our churches. Here, hear the, the word of God start with the household of faith. And you don't have to wait until you have more than enough. You know, this week I was reading a scripture in Luke where the Bible says they were in the temple and people went to give. And there was a woman who only had one penny. She gave her last. Whereas there were people who maybe they were millionaires or even if they were not millionaires, they had thousands and they gave more than her. But the Bible says Jesus complimented or credited more to the woman who gave less because it was her last. She did not give from a position of comfort. She gave her best because it was her last. Others gave more than her. But because they were giving from a position of plenty, Christ was not moved by their gift. So those who suffer because it is God's will for them, should by their actions trust themselves completely to their creator. Here the Bible talks about actions. 
You know, they say action speaks louder than words. Sometimes we can say we trust God. Sometimes we can say we love God or we love men. But our actions, they are saying something to the contrary. They are saying something to the contrary. You know, these things that I have just shared here, for me, it's another level. It's another level of maturity. Because people who are spiritually immature, somebody will say, no, if they do this to me, I, if they, I will not give my next chick. I once had somebody said that on TV, saying, for how long have we been giving the next chick? Because the Bible says, if they smack you on one chick, give them, and she says, no, we are not going to give another chick. We've been doing it for, for so long. But the Bible says, continue to do what is good. Don't be weary, don't lose heart. By so doing, you are pouring holes, coals of fire. You are heaping coals of fire on their head. So the next time you do good to a person, especially the one that you feel they don't deserve it, especially the one that you feel this one is my enemy. You must remember this very verse in Romans 12, 20 talks about your enemies. It says, therefore, your enemy, if they are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them a drink. Now I want to assure you, this is another level. If you want to see God and his righteousness this year, if you want to grow in your faith, if you want to call yourself a mature believer, this is one of the steps that we have to begin to take this year. It's not by power, it's not by might, it's by your spirit of God. Sometimes in your own strength, it will not be possible. But it is God who gives us strength. If you find it difficult to forgive that person who has hurt you so deeply, if you find it difficult to help that person who has hurt you so deeply, take it to God in prayer. Ask God to, for, to help you to forgive. Ask God to help you to pass the test and I'm not talking about bringing them into your space. Some of them you have to forgive from a distance. But when an opportunity presents itself to assist them, to feed them, to drink, to give them water, do it. Remember Joseph, when the brothers that sold him came, what did he do? He became compassionate towards them. He forgave them. He gave them food. He even invited them. He even talked to the king, the ruler of that time, to say, you know what? Here's my family. They end up coming here to come and enjoy because of Joseph. He didn't say, yeah, now it's my turn to punish you. He didn't do that. He forgave them. He gave them food. He created a comfortable space in a city or in a place where he was holding a position of influence. The Lord bless you. And may he make his countenance to shine on you. In Jesus' name.